Welcome to the episode today. Today's episode is for the filmmakers. Roll the intro. Alrighty, well, welcome to the episode. Um, uh, you know, today I've been really in like this project. This is actually the documentary I'm working on. I've been editing it like all day. I I've been really thinking about making this video, and I'm really excited to share with you some some stuff I've noticed while being a filmmaker, more of a documentary filmmaker, like doing something like this. Um, so um, I'm gonna give you a few um, things I've noticed and a few things that I've experienced. And if you're looking to shoot a documentary, maybe this might help you. So let's go to number one. The first thing is like for me it was about getting comfortable with the person. Now the person in, in that I'm talking about is my grandmother which is you know easier because you've known that per or they've known you your whole life and um, but getting to know that person so before this interview, what you don't see is I actually was with my grandmother for a few hours. We were just kind of watching TV and hanging out. And in the midst of that, I was asking questions I was going to ask while the cameras were there. And I did this without any cameras at first. I was just having a conversation and she didn't know that I was asking the questions that were going to be in the documentary. But I was, just, I was just asking those types of questions for her to get familiar with me asking them and then not replying for a while and getting her to like spark her memory a little bit and um, so I, I was playing that like fine line of like I don't want to hear too much because I want her to say in front of the camera um, but I also want her to feel comfortable with the questions um, and I wanted that conversation to be very much of what it was going to be like with the cameras um, so that was like a like that's one thing I, I, I would really suggest if you're looking on doing like a cinema verite interview style documentary um, get c comfortable with the people the subjects um, and without a camera so then when their cameras in the room the dynamic doesn't shift so uh, with that being said let's get into number two okay so the second thing is when a camera's in the room when the camera's just in the room being filmed, even if it's just sitting off in the corner or no one's behind it, the dynamic of the room will change. Um, so there, my favorite style of documentaries is what's called Cinema Verite, which is like the cameras will fly on the wall, just kind of watching things happen. Um, and even that, even just that alone, there will be a, a shift in the room. So what I do, um, as I said, in, like the first thing is like I just get people comfortable without a camera. Um, it's a little bit difficult in terms of like this aspect. Um, there was two cameras on her. I had the big red camera as number one, and I had a Canon um, T5i as number two, and it it brings a dynamic into the room that can really really change um, when when people like a, a good quote to think about is like just being an observer to something will change how that's being observed I know that sounds a little strange but I heard this from an interview with the guys who filmed I'm forgetting his name right now but the the guys who filmed uh, free solo um, it was about a climber who soloed um, El Cap El Capitan out in Yosemite uh, when we bring a camera into a situation, it w necessarily changes uh, what you're observing. And I think it's called the Hawthorne effect. You know, by observing something, you change the, the dynamic within what you're observing. So, um, and they were, ha I mean, that's a whole different type of filmmaking because you're on a wall, you're 1,400 feet up in the air, and here I'm in a living room, which is totally different. But still, they were saying that even just having a camera on might create more stress. Um, and I didn't want, and, and that can still apply even here in this type of setting, where even just a camera on and me asking a question, it feels like you have to say a lot, um, which sometimes it 
question doesn't need to have a lot of words in the answer, um, but it does create a different dynamic. Um, another thing, like a lot of interviewers ask ask for, is like, can you repeat the question in your answer? Um, which obviously people might not do in everyday life, and so that that that's how a camera can change the dynamic of a room. So that's like the second thing. Let's get on to the third thing. The third thing is editing. Um, when you're editing, well, when I'm editing this, I'm taking out my voice, so it's only my grandmother's voice in this. And sometimes, um, in conversation, people don't repeat the question, they just go, yeah, uh, in second grade, I did do blah, 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 blah. And, the, and you lose the question, so it kind of feels out of context. Yeah, I'm just giving an example there, but um, it kind of feels out of context. Um, so having to edit around that, um, or edit something in so you get the context. That can be a little tricky, but that's also something I learned while interviewing is like, I'm re-watching this and I'm like, man, I should have asked her to say this. And that's fine. That's not them acting. You're just trying to get the information that you need. Um, even if you do all the questions, all, you know, they have them answer all the questions and you go back and just do a little pickup stuff. That's, that's fine too. That's a number three. All right, number four. Number four is I like to do parallel stories, uh, and I, I'm not quite sure if that's the proper name for it, but that's what I call it, which is here, my grandmother was talking about school, actually, in this clip right here, I was editing. She was talking about school, and how going to school in the 40s, in 1940, was similar and also very different from today, but she kind of was talking about World War II a little bit. And that's a really cool parallel story to get into because it's so well known um, to have someone that lived through it and remembers it. To create that parallel story is like really like, I just think drives home the point even more. Um, so try to find a parallel story in the documentary can be very, very helpful to guide storylines and questions and stuff like that. So uh, let's get on to the fifth and final, final topic. Top, top topic. The fifth and final topic. I've actually have said it in my um, in in my video when I was talking about how to vlog. This is a uh, not a really good mirror to use, but it's all about the story. The equipment doesn't matter. You literally could film. You really could film your whole episode off an iPhone. It's not about the equipment. It's all about the story, and I'm going to repeat that because. In this, yes, I was using a RED, um, which is, you know, a crazy expensive high-end camera, but I was also using a T5i, which isn't a crazy high, it's not even ADD, it's it's a, not even, you know, it's, it's anybody would have that, I feel like, you know, like anybody, like, I know moms who have DSLRs who have, are not professionals and they have a T5, you know, so just one of those easy cameras, and that's, was part of these shots, were, were that. Um, so. It's not about the equipment, it's about the story you're trying to tell. And um, I just I just happen to have great equipment that I can tell stories, but I could easily have done this with my iPhone and a microphone. Gone, just done it quite as easy as that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, again, it's not about the equipment. It's about the story. Alrighty, well, sorry this episode today was kind of me just talking like this, but I just felt like I had to give those five points out and something I've been, I've learned and while well, editing this project and filming this project and working on this project, I do have another few weeks of filming, so we're editing everything right now, or not everything, but everything up to the point of when we need those shots and then we're gonna go back and film, so, um, I'm gonna get back to filming here, so tomorrow's episode will be slightly more exciting and possibly, maybe, I don't know, not geared towards filmmakers. It'll be in back to the regular scheduled programming. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, peace. I did it again. <laughs>